Desert Island Discs. Every Tuesday evening, a well-known person is asked the question, if you were to be cast away alone on a desert island, which eight gramophone records would you choose to have with you? Assuming, of course, that you also had a gramophone and an inexhaustible supply of needles. As usual, Roy Plumley introduces this week's castaway. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The introduction isn't going to take very long this evening. Our castaway is an artist whose records are featured very often in other castaways' choices. She is the possessor of a voice, a great and very beautiful voice, that has been acclaimed in the opera houses and concert halls of most of the big cities of the world. Kirsten Flagstad. Well, Madam Flagstad, what do you think about this desert island proposition? Not much. I feel rather like Toscanini did when he was asked in an American radio program which one opera score he would choose to have with him on a desert island. <laughs> which one did he choose? He didn't. He said if he was only allowed one, he would drown himself right away. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's play our eight records. Perhaps hearing them will give you a, a brighter outlook on Desert Island. What's the first one? The trio from Rosenkavalier. Why? I would want to take at any rate one record from opera. It would be Wagner. That I can sing myself without the help of a gramophone. <laughs> yes, indeed. So for my Desert Island, I would like something else. And I think this is my favorite part of any non-Wagnerian opera. Did you know Richard Streisand? I once sang the solo part in Beethoven's Ninth Symphony in Bayreuth under his direction. But he wouldn't have remembered that, though. I wonder. Isn't that lovely? Now another favorite. It has been my favorite for years and years. Mendelssohn's Music to a Midsummer Night's Dream, conducted by Sir Thomas Beecham. What's the reason? Anything to do with Shakespeare? No. Entirely to do with Mendelssohn and Sir Thomas. <laughs> you can't have it all, I'm afraid. Un only one record, from it. Which part do you want? The overture, the scherzo? The overture. Right, here it is. And now for my favorite composer, Beethoven. And for one of the earliest pieces of music that I can remember. This Archduke trio for piano, violin and cello. In my home, I was used to hearing a lot of chamber music. And I remember my brother used the opening bars of this trio as an overture when we acted our childish theatrical plays. He used to make a most impressive noise by blowing down the spout of kettle half full of water. <laughs> <laughs> Did you learn any instrument yourself as a child, uh, apart from kettles full of water? <laughs> well, I played the piano, but not very, not very well. But I'm going to take it off again. <laughs> Good. And who would you like to play the trio? Heifetz, Feuermann and Rubinstein. My next choice is from Verdi's Requiem, one of my favorite works, the Intrimisco, and sung by my favorite tenor, Jussi Björling. I never get tired of listening to that one. Madam Flagstad, how would you cope with life on a desert island? Would you be able to look after yourself, do you think? I don't think I would be very good at it. <laughs> I wouldn't mind the solitude, but... That wouldn't worry me at all. I like to be alone. Yes, well, what about practical things? I mean, I mean, lighting a fire and cooking. Well, I think I could light a fire all right. If I had my reading spectacles with me. I could use them as a burning glass, couldn't I? Yes, yes. I don't know anything about cooking, though. But I like raw food. And raw fish, which we use quite a lot in Norway. Oysters and shrimps. I'm not sure about oysters on a tropical island. Oh, I don't want a tropical island. I want a nice cold island, somewhere in the northern hemisphere. Well, there shouldn't be any difficulty about that. There's practically no cure at all for the cold one. <laughs> and I like swimming, and in cold water, too. Well, you know, this might solve your problem about what to live in. If the island was cold enough, you could build an igloo out of blocks of snow oh, or ice. Let's not rush to extremes. <laughs> well, another echo now. Elisabeth Schwarzkopf singing O mio babbino caro from Giannis Kiki by Puccini. It's the most charming piece of music, and... Charmingly sung. I shall always remember the first time I heard Lisa Scharskopf sing. 
It was at the performance of Fidelio at Salzburg a couple of years ago. When she produced the first notes of, of the quartet, Miris so wunderbar. I thought I'd never heard anything lovelier from a human throat. And I haven't yet chosen a record for solo piano. And there's such a big choice here. So many well-loved pieces. Even when I narrow the choice down to Chopin, it is still exceedingly difficult. I think I would settle for the part of the sonata number three in B minor. And the pianist? Dino Lipati. He gives to Chopin such a clean and clear interpretation, I think. Now we'll go, go, go back to singing again. Well, just for a moment, let's get back to your singing. Which part of the world are you off to now? First, I'm off to Germany, mm -hmm. then uh, Italy, Switzerland, and back to Italy, and France. Uh, in how long a space of time? Oh, up to the summertime. <laughs> just, just after the summer? Yeah. Yes, and then I'm going home for my holiday. Uh, and then at the end of the summer, you're coming back to London, is that right? Yes. And the end of the summer, I shall come back to London to sing at the Mermaid Theatre again. That's the little Elizabethan theatre in St. John's Wood? Yes, the one that the Miles built in their garden. Mm -hmm. uh, what are you singing there this year? Oh, the same as last year. Purcell's Dider and Aeneas. Yes, and twice nightly? Yes. <laughs> the only twice nightly opera season in the world, I believe. I'm also singing there some Bach cantatas. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, the interesting thing about this is that for the first time I shall be singing as contralto. As contralto? Yeah. I've always been fond of using the lower register of my voice. But never mind my voice. Let's talk about a beautiful English voice, Maggie Tate. My favorite record of hers is Dupac's L'Invitation au Voyage. Last one. That must be my native composer, Grieg, and a part of his famous piano concerto in A minor, and played by Walter Gieseking. And that's the lot. That's your eight records. Is that all I'm allowed on this idol? Just a gramophone and a few records? Oh, I was coming to that. You are allowed one luxury object as well. Something that mustn't be useful. What would you like? I must have knitting needles and, and lots of wool. Well, how much wool? Oh, lots and lots. Tons. <laughs> I do a lot of knitting. <laughs> You'd have no wardrobe troubles at any rate. <laughs> of course not. I think I can knit any garment. I knit trucks for my women friends. <laughs> All right, that'll be seen to. Either enough wool to last you for your sojourn on the island, or some kind of a machine that processes seaweed into knitting wool. Well, thank you, Madam Kirsten Flagstaff, for being shipwrecked for us and letting us hear your choice of desert island discs.